Uh, mm -hmm. First topic for today is uh, QuantumScape. Uh, QuantumScape is a oh. battery company. Um, but before we kind of get into them, what uh, can you describe a little bit? What are solid state batteries, and how are bat how is battery ch technology actually changing? Uh, yeah, great. So QuantumScape, fascinating company. Uh, definitely need to understand the science uh, behind solid state batteries to understand the bull thesis on QuantumScape and all solid state battery makers for that matter. Um, so lithium ion batteries, they are the status quo uh, for batteries today, the batteries that power your, your smartphone, your computer, uh, electric vehicles. They are the batteries that power the world. Now these batteries are built on top of liquid battery chemistry. So what that means is that you just in a very elementary oversimplified sense, a battery comprises an anode, a cathode, and an electrolyte between the two. Um, ions flow between the anode and cathode when they char when the battery charges and recharges. Um, and the uh, anode or the ions flow through the electrolyte. Now, the lithium ion batteries that are built on liquid battery chemistry, so the predominant majority of, of batteries today, pretty much all batteries today, have a solid cathode and a solid anode, but they have a liquid electrolyte. So the solution between them is, is a liquid. Now that works well to an extent, but the problem is that liquids are less dense than solids. So you can only compress a lithium ion battery built on liquid battery chemistry so much. You can only compress so much. So the density of it, the energy density of a battery cell uh, can get maxed out. And right now we're sort of hitting that maxing out point. So why can't electric vehicles drive faster or drive uh, farther? Why can't electric vehicles recharge faster? Why can't your smartphone last for two, three, four, five days? Why can't your smartphone recharge itself in five minutes? The answer to all those questions is because we've maxed out the energy cell density of liquid based uh, lithium ion batteries. So the breakthrough, the potential breakthrough here is turning that liquid electrolyte into a solid. So you have a solid anode, a solid cathode, and a solid electrolyte, with the science behind that being that solids can be more dense than liquids. So you can really compress the heck out of this thing far more than you can a, a liquid-based battery. And therefore, you can create much more effective batteries that are much smaller. Electric vehicles can drive farther, recharge faster. Your smartphone can last for days, recharge in five minutes. Your computer can last for days, recharge minutes, so on and so forth. So in doing this and switching from liquid to solid electrolyte, we could fundamentally alter uh, the way things work in society, electronics work in society, because everything these days is an electronic device of some sort or another, then the transition or rather leap to solid state batteries represents a complete paradigm shift in society that will unlock a multi hundred billion dollar, if not multi trillion dollar revolution uh, across a lot of walks of life. Um, so that is the exciting sort of science behind solid state batteries. Now, solid state batteries are exceptionally expensive to make. The science is very complex and no one has really effectively done it at a scale large enough to power anything that matters. So this is still a lab project for mm -hmm. all intents and purposes. The leader in that lab project race right now is QuantumScape. Um, they have the most proven solid state battery concept that is working on a very tiny scale. And as they've been scaling it up to bigger and bigger and bigger batteries, granted still very small batteries, not enough to power anything that matters, but as they've been scaling it up over the past year, year and a half, their solid state batteries have proven to work very, very, very well. Um, so we're very bullish on their technical lead in the space. Now, on top of that, the company has a ton of resources. They have so much cash on the balance sheet because they raised a bunch in the private markets. They raised a bunch through their SPAC IPO, SPAC merger acquisition uh, in late 2020. So this, this company has a ton of money on the balance sheet. Uh, Volkswagen is pouring 
hundreds of millions of dollars into them. So they also have the support of Volkswagen. They're partnered with two of the top, I believe, five auto, or two of the top 10 auto OEMs in the uh, world today. So they have the partnerships, they have the resources, they have all these things that are going to allow them to hopefully uh, extend what is an early technical lead in the space. And perhaps what matters just as much as everything I've just said is that they have a have an exceptionally talented team of engineers working on this technology that we we study the solid state battery industry uh, a lot. And relative to all the other competitors in the space, QuantumScape has the most talented engineering team that should allow them to extend their early technical lead and become the the 400 pound gorilla in this space by 2025, 2026, 2027, when these batteries start to actually make their way into the real world. So that is the short of the bull thesis, maybe not so short, but that is as short as it can get uh, the bull <laughs> thesis on QuantumScape stock. So what makes uh, QuantumScape uh, different from other companies that are doing the same types of research, aside from you know the things that you just described, like money and talent? Is there a difference in technology, the way that other companies are approaching these batteries? Uh, is it the way that they're storing the energy? Or is it just, you know, this is where this is the most advanced research that's going on right now. This is where the money's going. This is why they're the leader. Yeah, so I think you have to understand that, um, yes, there is a there is a technical difference. Um, QuantumScape, so the big problem in solid state batteries is something called dendrites. And dendrites are the fact that when you create something so energy dense and you have this solid through which you're transporting ions, that through each charge recharge cycle, this really dense material starts to fracture, starts to rupture, and cracks start to form in it. Those cracks are called dendrites. Over time, those dendrites build up and they cause the battery to short circuit. Mm -hmm. So dendrites are a huge technical hurdle in solid state battery development. QuantumScape has a unique sort of ceramic material, proprietary design, nobody knows what it is besides people at QuantumScape, mm -hmm. uh, that eliminates the problem of dendrite. So they've shown through on a very small scale mm -hmm their batteries can charge and recharge through multiple cycles without dendrites forming in the electrolyte. And that is a breakthrough of breakthroughs when it comes to solid state battery development. Um, so that is sort of a technical difference that QuantumScape has achieved that other uh, solid state battery makers have yet to achieve at the scale that QuantumScape has achieved it. So that that is a huge difference for QuantumScape, technically speaking. Um, but Beyond that, even if they didn't have that, we would still be excited on quantum scale because you have to understand in emerging growth industries like solid state batteries, what matters is talent and money. Mm -hmm. That's what matters. Because as I said, these are lab projects. Mm -hmm. Everybody's still trying to figure this out. Nobody's, nobody's cracked the code. Everybody's still trying to figure it out. And so let's say it's, it's like a fifth grade science fair and everyone's trying to figure out how to complete a task, how to do a project. Which team are you going to bet on? You're going to bet on the team that has all the kids that get A's in science class, right? <laughs> That's the team you're going to bet on. Yeah. That is QuantumScape. QuantumScape has the Stanford back and they have the Stanford name. They have a huge Stanford pipeline. They have really top level engineers and they have all of this money that they've raised to attract even better engineers. Because at the end of the day, engineers are going to go, the best engineers are going to go where the most money is. That's yeah. just where they're going to go. And then it becomes this sort of self-fulfilling prophecy because you attract five or six top level engineers from Stanford. Then all of a sudden the grads after them are like, wait, that's where, you know, I, I knew Johnny A. He went to QuantumScape. That must mm -hmm. be a great company. Oh, they're offering me $150,000, $200,000 starting. That's, well, whoa. You know, mm -hmm. then I'll say, okay, I'm going. So it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, this positive feedback loop where all of a sudden they just have this talent pipeline that allows them to durably attract top-notch talent and that is what matters in this industry today because like i said this is a fifth grade science project mm -hmm. well not a fifth grade science project it is a <laughs> phd science project yeah but it is a science project nonetheless and the people that are going to figure it out are going to be the smartest people in the room and that's why i want to align myself and, and the people that that follow me with the smartest people in the room and mm -hmm. quantum scheme collectively they're the smartest people in the room uh, in solid state battery technology development and that's why we're we're pretty bullish on that stock, especially at current levels. You know, it's been wiped out recently, wiped out. 
And that's because it is the quintessence of a long duration asset mm -hmm. that the stock market or that Wall Street has loved to hate over the past few months. Mm -hmm. because this is a pre-revenue company. So not just a money losing company, but a pre-revenue company, a pre-product company. It's as early as it gets. This is venture investing, folks. Mm -hmm. This is not what Wall Street is used to. They're used to revenues and cash flows and profits. QuantumScape has none of that. QuantumScape, it's a science project, mm -hmm. but it's the most exciting science project on the planet Earth right now. And if they succeed in this science project, the revenues, profits, and cash flows they're going to produce by 2025, 2026, 2027, 2030 are going to be enormous. And at mm -hmm. the current valuation, it really discounts that potential tremendously, mm -hmm. so much so that I think it is a super compelling buy below 20 bucks in this mid-teens range that it's trading at right now absolutely love the stock. So I think you've just kind of described it a little bit, but how far away are we from seeing this in an EV, EV an electric vehicle, in our computers, in our phones? Uh, you know, battery technology traditionally, like you've described already, hasn't really changed in since, you know, the advent of batteries. So, you know, are we looking at, you know, is this yeah. a five year? Is this a 10 year? When are we going to start seeing this battery in, you know, actually integrated in our daily lives? Realistically, I would say the first half of the 2020s, you're not going to see any solid state batteries um, on, on the road in electric vehicles that you see every day. I think there'll be a few prototypes out there that none of us are going to actually see, kind of like the self-driving cars of today. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, there are some in Phoenix and some in Houston, but on an everyday basis, we don't see them. In the back half of the 2020s, we're going to start to see solid state batteries make their way into uh, electric vehicles that are made by Toyota, Ford, Volkswagen, so on and so forth. And you're going to see them account for maybe 5 to 10% of electric vehicles on the road. And then by the 2030s, I think solid state batteries, as the cost of client curve continues and progresses, and as the cost of solid state batteries plummets, I think you're going to start to see solid state batteries become the incumbent solution for electric vehicles. So this is a market that's kind of like, if you think about that hockey stick growth, mm -hmm. we are in the first two innings of that growth mm -hmm. and it's going to be very gradual over the next few years and then come 2026 2027 you could that's when the hockey stick's going to start taking off and that's where i think you're going to see tens of millions of cars get outfitted with uh with solid state batteries uh at that point in time so this is definitely a long-term play mm -hmm. but it's a long-term play you have to get in early because it's a long-term play that has so much potential and which Wall Street's already getting in on, which venture capital money's already getting in on. So yes, it's many years out, but place your bets now because the race is on. The horses are running and you have to you know, claim your horse and, and get on it and run this race or else you're going to be left behind. So that's why we think you got to get in early on solid state battery development, despite the fact that it's still many years away. Will this be an actual energy solution long term as well like not just uh, yeah that's that i'm glad you brought that up i forgot about that angle i don't know how i let that slip my mind thank you aaron <laughs> um solid state batteries to the top of this this uh this call solid state batteries aren't just about electric vehicles mm -hmm. batteries power everything so and all those batteries are based on liquid battery chemistry or most of them are so you you do this paradigm shift from liquid to solid and all of a sudden, you're not just talking about electric vehicles. You're talking about every electronics device in the world. And perhaps most potently, you're talking about energy storage solutions. Mm -hmm. So you know we are hugely bullish on energy storage. Mm -hmm. We think the grid is going to be decarbonized. Mm -hmm. We believe solar, wind, hydrogen, all those things are going to become the incumbent uh uh, energy sources of this world, not because of saving the planet and tree hugging stuff, but because the cost curves on those mm -hmm. things have positive learning rates. We talked about learning rates last week, yep. right? Mm -hmm. um, those things have very positive learning rates. Fossil fuels do not have positive learning rates. Therefore, within the next five to 10 years, solar is already cheaper than fossil fuels. Within the next five to 10 years, solar, hydrogen, wind, they're all going to be substantially cheaper than fossil fuels. So it's going to be an economic decision, not an environmental one. We might hide it under the guise of environmental friendliness, <laughs> but the reality is we're going to go green because it's going to be way cheaper to go green. That mm -hmm. is a fact. So mm -hmm. the grid's going to decarbonize because of economics. 
as we decarbonize because of economics, we're going to need energy storage solutions to back up that power because solar, wind, they're intermittent. So you need to store them when the sun's not shining, when the wind's not blowing. Hugely bullish on energy storage. We think there's going to be batteries everywhere that are backing up um, grids. Mm -hmm. So those batteries are lithium ion batteries. Mm -hmm. They're based on liquid battery chemistry, which mm -hmm. means they too are maxed out in terms of energy cell density. They can only charge uh, or store energy for up to four hours. Their duration is a four hour duration storage. Mm -hmm. That's not very good. And that's not very suitable for the needs that we're going to have for these batteries by 2025, 2030. The solution, solid state batteries. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you build these energy storage solutions on top of solid state batteries, and boom, you're talking eight hour, 10 hour, 12 hour, maybe 24 hour duration. You're fundamentally changing the calculus behind how much energy and how long these batteries can store that energy. Everything changes. And that's why QuantumScape recently partnered with Fluence, mm -hmm. which is one of the, the world's leading lithium ion battery energy storage solution providers, because QuantumScape realized that, hey, Volkswagen is going to use our batteries to make their cars last way longer. Mm -hmm. Fluence can use our batteries to make their energy storage solutions last way longer. Mm -hmm. So now QuantumScape partnered up with Fluence and boom, they're working on developing solid state batteries for energy storage and applications. That is a massive market. The stock has not really reacted to that news way understating the potential there. The potential there is <laughs> enormous. So yes, QuantumScape is not, we're not just talking about a paradigm shift in transportation and the auto market. We're talking about a paradigm shift in the entire energy market. Mm -hmm. And QuantumScape's at the forefront of it. Mm -hmm. Granted, QuantumScape is very risky. Like mm -hmm. I said, it's a science project. This mm -hmm. is a science project. But the risk reward profile, the potential downside from current levels versus the potential upside that asymmetry is so attractive and in favor of bulls right now that I think you just you have to nibble on shares below 20. It's it's so, so attractive as a long term play. So, yes, love QuantumScape, love the energy angle. Thank you, Aaron, for bringing that up. I totally <laughs> let that slip my mind. Thanks for watching HGI Clips. For the full episode, head on over to our sister channel at Hyper Growth Investing by clicking the link in the description or listen to the podcast on any of your favorite streaming platforms. We make new episodes every Wednesday, so make sure to check it out and subscribe to never miss any of Luke's Hyper Growth Insights.